Hi friends, I know you might think that the name of the video doesn't match the content, but don't rush to conclusions. I call evil spirit everything that can lead to failure of the assembled device. This is an increased supply voltage, short circuit, overheating and so on. Recently, I published a video in which I showed and explained the principle of operation of the protection circuit from low and high voltage. It can be implemented in almost any low voltage circuit. I advise you to watch this video, there are many details, you will find the link in the description. After posting, I decided to quickly outline a full protection circuit. That should include protections from low and high voltage, overheating and short circuits, so to speak, 4-in-1. The whole circuit is assembled on one comparator LM339. It has four independent channels and in the mentioned video I used only two. On them, as already said, protection against increased and reduced supply voltage is built. Just in case, I remind you that this is a universal protection that can be used, for example, in the 12 to 220 converter. Such protection will not allow the converter to discharge the battery. It will also turn off the converter if the supply voltage is above normal. It will provide thermal protection and protection against short circuits if it accidentally happened. The device can actually be any, for example, successfully such protection can be used in a charger. On the board we have four indicator LEDs for each of the protections. We can sign them to know exactly what protection work. We also have four trimmer multi-turn resistors to set the thresholds for each protection. But before we start, a few words about the sponsor of this video, about the company GLC, which is one of the leaders in the field of production of printed circuit boards. You can order PCB of any complexity at the lowest prices. The price starts from $2 for 10 pieces. GLC PCB production is back to its normal work. Feel free to order PCB, SMT and Stencil. All links are in the description. How does it work? The first two comparators realize protection against high and low supply voltage. The principle of operation of the circuit is as follows. The reference voltage from the Zinier diode is applied to one of the inputs of the comparator and the voltage to be controlled is supplied to the other input through the divider. If it is above or below the reference, the comparator instantly changes the state of its output. As a result, the low power transistor opens and the LED indicator lights up. In the collector circuit of the transistor, we can connect anything such as a relay coil or a powerful N channel transistor to control more powerful loads. In the case of protection against low voltage, the same thing happens. Only the reference voltage is applied to the inverted input of the comparator. The thermal protection system is also not much different. Everything is the same, only one of the divider resistors is replaced by a thermistor. The NTS type thermistor is 10 kilo ohms. It decreases resistance when heated. This will increase the voltage at the non inverse input of the comparator. That is, the balance between the inputs will be upset. As a result, the state of the output of the comparator will change and the transistor will operate. Next is short circuit protection. Here is a classic example of using a current sensor, a low impedance shunt. Pay attention to connection way. One end of shunt connected to the supply ground, the other end is also the ground but it is input ground. For example, one end goes to the minus of the battery and the other end to the minus of the converter. If the protected device consumes current above a determined limit, which is set by a variable resistor, then the protection is activated. As we know, a certain voltage drop will occur in a section of a circuit when current flows. In this case, this section is a low resistance shunt. The voltage drop depends on the current in the circuit and the resistance of the shunt. The greater the current and resistance, the greater the voltage drop on the shunt. Here, the reference voltage is compared with the voltage drop on the shunt. Well, next you already know. Adjustment for complete setup, you will need a laboratory power supply, an exemplary thermometer with a thermocouple and a current sensor. 
In my case, current sensor is a 10 amps shunt. When a current of 10 amps flows through it, the drop on the shunt will be 75 millivolts. As a rule, most shunts have just such a drop. The difference can only be in the rated current. We connect the device to the laboratory unit. By the first tuning resistor, we set low voltage protection. For this, we set, for example, 9.5 volts on the laboratory unit and slowly rotate the tuning resistor until the LED lights up. Do the same in the case of over voltage protection. For example, we need the protection to work at 16 volts, so set these 16 volts on the laboratory block and rotate the trimmer until the LED turns on. To do this, you need any heat source with the ability to adjust the temperature, for example an iron. The thermocouple of the reference thermometer and the thermistor of the device are placed on a heated surface. Warm up to the temperature at which the protection should work. The temperature is monitored by a thermometer. Then we are rotating the tuning resistor until the LED lights up. I used an ordinary light bulb as a heat source, wrapped it up with aluminum foil and fixed the thermocouple of the reference thermometer and the device thermistor with tape. They should be located as close to each other as possible to minimize temperature variation. The bulb temperature was changed by the voltage changing on it with the help of a laboratory auto transformer. The brighter bulbs light, the greater the thermal radiation. Short circuit protection. It is important to note that the resistors in the shunt indicated in the circuit must be selected based on your needs and your shunt. If we need a high protection current and the shunt is low resistance, then the resistance of the specified resistor increases. For a more precise adjustment, it also can be replaced with a high resistance variable resistor. To fine-tune of the protection, it's desirable to have a rheostat or an electronic load. If none of this is at hand, you can use powerful lamps or a nichrome spiral. Next, connect everything as shown. We increase the load until the current in the circuit becomes equal to value at which the protection must operate. The current is controlled by an additional ammeter or by measuring the voltage drop across the shunt and then according to Ohm's law you can calculate what current flows in the circuit. The last option in this case is the most convenient. If you have achieved the required current, simply rotate the fourth tuning resistor until the LED turns on. After setting up all the protections, you can glue the screws of the tuning resistors or unsolder them, measure the resulting resistance and replace with two constant resistors. But the latter is convenient if you are going to implement the circuit in a specific device and everything is carefully configured. The protection system is very economical. If the LEDs don't light up, the consumption from the source of 12 volts is only from 10 to 15 milliamps. It is convenient to use the board in voltage converters, chargers, and so on. The protection response speed is instant. That's all. Please don't forget to rate this video and share it with friends if you liked it. I remind you that you will find all the necessary links in the description under the video, and you can ask additional questions in our group. Now I just say goodbye. Until next time, with you as always was Kaysian TV.